without a doubt, one of the most recognizable submissions out there in the world is the armbar. It is a staple of Brazilian jiu-jitsu. It's a huge part of judo as well, and even John Wick does armbars. That's how recognizable this submission is. But the funny thing about all this is it's kind of terrible. Like, as far as submissions go, it's up there as probably one of the most unreliable submissions you can go for. But hold on, hold on, hold on, hold your horses. The armbar in itself, in a vacuum, there's nothing inherently wrong with it. But just because there's nothing wrong with it doesn't change the fact that it's, well, unreliable. Now, anybody who watches a lot of UFC, they know. The armbar is certainly a very popular technique to go for, but as far as its finish rate, it's not the best. But for me, this whole concept got really conceptualized just a couple weeks ago when I was watching the Ankalaya vs. Johnny Walker 2 prelims, where Matthew Semmelsberger fought Preston Parsons. Now, Parsons had a super slick transition into the armbar. It seemed really tight, Semmelsberger was wincing in pain, but of course, he pulls his arm out, the fight keeps going like nothing happened. And for some reason, I don't know why, but it was that moment, it really hit me. Man, armbars suck. And there's a plethora of reasons for why that is, and as we look at examples, it's going to get more and more clear to you. For starters, as I've said many, many times... When searching for submissions in an MMA fight that are not blood chokes, but joint locks, in order to get your opponent to tap, you need to 1. Have the submission fully locked in, to the point that you are causing enough damage to the joint that your opponent will not be able to continue if you crank it, and 2. You need to completely kill your opponent's opportunity to escape. If you give them the space to try and defend, they are not going to stop trying to escape. Half of their paycheck is on the line if they lose. They're not going to tap just because it hurts. They're going to tap when they know there is no escaping. So let's look at a few examples. And starting off, this is what I consider to be an armbar executed pretty poorly in regards to meeting the requirements just listed. And that is Islam Mahachev versus Drew Dober. Now, the transition to the armbar was really good. Islam's in mount, Drew extends his arms, pushing him off, which is just asking to be armbarred if you're doing that. And Islam gladly accepted. He swings his legs over, Drew rolls with it, and they end up here. Now, if you guys had watched my video before about guillotines, you would know that Joe Rogan knows nothing about submissions, which is concerning because he is a black belt. But for those who haven't seen that video, what I'm referring to is the time that Tyron Woodley locked up a real shitty guillotine attempt on Stephen Thompson. And Joe Rogan just absolutely lost his mind about, oh, he's going to go to sleep. Oh, he, this is it. The fight's over. He's going to sleep. There's no escape. There's no escape at all. And then Thompson escapes and he goes, wow. Oh, it's a miracle. Well, no, it was just a shitty guillotine attempt. And this is no exception, because the first thing Joe Rogan says when they get here is... He's gonna break his arm. Drew's, still, Drew's okay here. First off, you cannot break somebody's arm in an armbar, but we'll circle back to that point later. For starters, the big issue here is that Islam does not have Drew's shoulder controlled. He only has the arm. Now, of course, you can still invert the joint with only having the arm, but when you have the shoulder controlled as well, there is way more leverage and a lot more pressure. Exampled here when Demetrius Johnson hit his suplex armbar against Ray Borg. He has Borg's shoulder controlled. Issue number two, Islam does not have his legs over Dober's face. He has them triangled off to the side. Now, the reason why you would have your legs triangled to the side is to prevent the hitchhiker's escape, which, shown here, rolls over his shoulder, escaping the armbar. But Dober never attempted the hitchhiker escape, so by having his legs triangled like that, it allowed Dober to turn into the armbar, relieving even more pressure. Now, Islam eventually does throw his legs back over the face, but by this point, Dober is now on top, allowing him to pull out of the armbar. Another great example... Tony Ferguson versus Kevin Lee. Tony, 
throws his legs over, extends the arm bar. Joe Rogan hits us with his famous, he's going to break it. The, the, it's, the, 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 the fight's over. It's over. He's got it. He's got it. Oh, cool. He's going to break his arm. Shocker. The fight was not over. Kevin Lee did not get his arm broken. And here's the reason why. You see, at first, Tony's trying to invert the joint against his body. But Kevin Lee here turns his arm. So Tony needs to try to change the angle to keep bending the joint. But as he's attempting to do that, Kevin Lee steps over escaping. Now, you yourself, pick your arm up, put it straight out into the air. And now rotate your hand back and forth. Look at what's happening to your elbow. Your elbow joint is moving. And that is a big reason why it can be so difficult to finish the armbar. You see a very similar thing when Vitor Belfort armbarred John Jones. At first, John is able to grab his own hand, but there's not enough strength there to prevent somebody from hipping their entire body into your joint. It's subtle, but look at Jones' fist. See the way it turns. That turn is changing where his elbow joint is. To the layman, you'd think that Vitor is just cranking the submission this whole time, but he's really not. He's putting pressure for sure, but Vitor has to fight to keep John's elbow joint against his body. So in the moments that John's twisting his arm, he's not putting pressure. He can't. It hurts for sure. John's arm definitely got hyperextended and he may have even picked up an injury, but this is a championship fight. That's not enough to make him tap. But let's hear Joe Rogan's comments about it. Can he get it? He might break that arm, Mike. He might break that arm. Take a look at this armbar sequence between Craig Jones and Gordon Ryan. There are moments for sure, as you can see, where the armbar was really tight. But Craig is having a really hard time fully hipping into the submission because Gordon's constant twisting, constant turning is forcing Craig to keep making adjustments nonstop. And again, in those moments of making adjustments, it's really difficult to put pressure on the joint. And this highlights another big issue with the submission. And that is, there's a serious lack of control while going for them. Think about a rear naked choke. You have your legs wrapped around the body of your opponent. You're pretty much negating any kind of movement they can possibly have. But in an armbar, that's not the case. When you look at Islam Drew Dober, Islam went from mount arguably the most controlling position you can be in, to then only controlling Dober's arm, which allowed him to move and roll and eventually step over and escaping on top. Not that Islam shouldn't have gone for the armbar. The reason he went for it was because he was dominating the fight and there was only 20 seconds left in the round. So it was smart by him. We're just looking purely at the mechanics of the position. It was the same thing with Kevin Lee versus Tony as well. Kevin had full control over his body, so he stepped over to escape. Now, this isn't to say no one should ever go for arm bars. It is a good technique, but it has a really high skill barrier. Fabricio Verdum, two-time ADCC champion, has an amazing arm bar. You see from his fight with Alexander Gustafson, he's doing a great job pinning Gustafson's body down, he's controlling Gus's shoulder, and the most important part, before he even sits back to crank it, he grabs Gus's hand, preventing him from twisting, and he was able to get the finish. And this is true for fighters like Ronda Rousey, Charles Oliveira, people with very high technical proficiency when it comes to finishing the armbar. But even with that all being said, it still has a serious limitation to it. Circling back to early in the video, I said, you cannot get your arm broken from an armbar. You just can't. It is a serious misconception people have. When somebody is cranking an armbar on you, what you're risking is hyperextension, not breaking. At the absolute worst, you're risking dislocation. Ronda Rousey was able to dislocate Misha Tate's arm back in Strike Force, and Frank Mir dislocated Tim Sylvia's arm as well. But point is, your elbow joint has a lot of give. That's why we see people grit their teeth as their arm gets extended before escaping. That is why Tony Ferguson let this happen to his arm, and he was still able to finish the fight. Now, there's no doubt his arm was 100% injured after that. And if that amount of torque was going on with a minute left in the round, I'm sure we probably would have seen a dislocation, and the fight would have been stopped. But all in all, 
when you look at the amount of control you have going for an armbar, how difficult it can be to fully extend the arm, and how much give that joint has. Out of all the other submissions you can go for, the armbar kind of sucks. It really sucks.